Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and a few days back I did a video about the new C Sharp Dev Kit tools for Visual Studio Code. I had a couple questions about using this with uh, the Godot Game Engine so I'm going to do a follow-up video. I did one of these about four or five years ago. What we're going to show you here is how to get Visual Studio Code, which is available at code.visualstudio.com, up and running with the Godot Game Engine. Now obviously you're going to need to download Visual Studio, I'm not going to show that today but I'm going to show everything else. On top of that, you also need Godot. If you're going to be doing C Sharp development with Godot, just make sure when you download Godot that you download the right version, the Godot Engine.net version. Once you've got both of those things, what you need to do is fire up Visual Studio Code. Just launch it. It should be installed at this point, and we are going to have to install some extensions. All of the extensions have nicely been coupled together into the C Sharp dev kit, however. This will bring in the C Sharp language, the .NET installer, and other things that you need. Just basically come on here, go ahead and do an install. And uh, this will take eh, a couple of seconds because it does have, again, a couple of dependencies to bring down. So uh, should be in now. And you're going to notice if I go out, I come back in and we get rid of my filter here. You will now notice that I have .NET runtime tools installed, C Sharp installed, C Sharp Dev Kit, and IntelliCode for C Sharp. Now, one thing you may need to do because of the way the Dev Kit works is log into it. You can do that by hitting F1 and do .NET sign into your Visual Studio account. Fortunately, this is part of the C Sharp Dev Kit experience. If you've already got Visual Studio uh, Community or uh, Pro or Standard, whatever installed, uh, this will already exist for you because you need to install, you need to log into full blown uh, Visual Studio Community as it stands right now. So we got all the tools we need installed. I'm just going to go ahead and shut down for the point just because sometimes when you do a fresh install, it isn't uh, perfect for you. Now, what next thing you do is go to wherever you installed Godot. In my case, it is in my downloads folder right here. And and fire it up. So right here, we're launching it and we're going to create a new project called this demo project. We will put this of course in temp because all things go in temp. Like so, C colon slash temp. We create our folder. I don't need git like so and create an edit. All right, so we're going to create a C sharp project that we're going to use in Visual Studio Code. So once this is created, let's go ahead and create a simple scene. We'll add this guy into the scene like so. We will save our scene, sure. And now we're just gonna go ahead, grab this guy, right click it, and we're going to attach a script to it. Make sure that if you're working with C Sharp that you select language as C Sharp like so. By the way, you can mix and match. You can use GD Script if you wish and otherwise. By the way, if you want to use GD Script in Visual Studio, there is another extension available for Godot. You don't need it to work with C++, oh sorry, C Sharp, so I'm not gonna demonstrate it today. So here we got our simple script attached to our editor like so. Uh, now, a couple of other things you're going to want to do. First off, you go into Project, Tools, C Sharp, and create a C Sharp solution. Like so. And done. All right. The other thing you're going to probably want to do uh, is go into, I believe it is Editor Settings. And where is my editor? Text Editor External. So go on down here, Text Editor External. If you want to have it so that when you open up a C Sharp file, it will open here. So basically click here and then you can go and find Visual Studio Code available right there. So uh, that is how you can hook it up to your editor. Now what we're going to do is fire up code itself. I'm going to show you a little trick on how you can get to your project. Come on over here. You can open this up in File Manager. This is there. You will now notice there is a CES project available right here. What I am going to do now is go up here to the location bar. And if you did not know about this, you can hit CMD up in the location bar and it will open up a um, command prompt in that current directory, which is always kind of cool. And then I'm just going to launch Visual Studio Code by doing code and then dot, which is a way of saying current directory. There's all kinds of ways you could have done this. You could have loaded up code and then opened up the directory manually. This is my shortcut way of doing it. All right, so here you can see our project here. Here is our C Sharp code. Now, in order to get things up and going, uh, there are a couple of things we are going to need to do. So first off, we are going to need to create uh, a tasks file. So we're going to have to create a default build task, and it's just .NET build. And the default one is fine. This will enable you to actually build your C Sharp code, and that is all you need to do. So you needed to create this tasks.json file. Now, the next thing you're going to need to do is create some kind of a run file. So you can debug your code directly from Visual Studio Code. So you can launch it when you hit F5 and so on. To do this, basically click on this icon over here, and you're going to notice you've got options including create a launch.json file, and we'll go with the suggestion right here this entire first thing 
right here, line there to there, including the last comment. Let's go ahead and get rid of it. We are going to just create a single simple launch command right here. And it is called right now .NET Core Attach, which is not actually what we're doing. What we're going to do is here, we'll call this run Godot run. All right, so this is again what we want. So what you'll notice is when I switch this guy out, once we save this, uh, I think if I save it right now, you're gonna see up here immediately. So you can run multiple configurations. And one thing I'm not gonna show you how to do today, but you can actually have it connect to a running instance of Godot. So you can just Google the launch, just Google launch.json and like attach Godot, and you'll find the exact script that you need. But right now we need to do a couple of things. First off, we need to tell it before it launches, we want it to build. So we do a pre-launch task and we set it to quote, build like this. Next up, what we want to do is tell it where Godot is. So we're going to run a command called program. And then here, what we need to do is give it a path. The easiest way to do this is to come back over here, which is, oops, not there, uh, over here to where your Godot is installed. So right here, there is my Godot. I'm just going to go ahead and take that guy out there. Now you'll notice I renamed Godot from dash V4 underscore stable underscore mono to just Godot.exe. Just makes this a little bit easier, but all you're doing is telling it where the path is. Now, one thing you will find is they don't like slashes like this. What you got to do is come in and go to the Unix style slashes for everything. So just basically paste in the directory like this. All you're doing is telling Visual Studio that your project where it can find the Godot executable to run this. And then we're just going to do, uh, I'll do it case sensitive depending on what platform you're on. On Windows, it doesn't matter. But so there is our program that will run. Uh, we can also set up our current working directory. So this is where it will look for assets, etc. cetera. Uh, and to do this, there is a little handy macro you can run. Oh, so something is off. Oh, my bad. I want to switch request out to launch. That's why we were getting all this. So basically you're not connecting to an existing or established version. You're launching a new executable. So that's why we had to switch that out. And that was the underlying issue we had. All right, so here we're gonna use a macro uh, and it's just basically here. And then this is workspace folder like so. All right, so that basically just current working directory. So this is where it's going to run it. And it's gonna basically be whatever directory you're opened in right now is what that command is saying. Uh, console, I don't actually know if this one is needed, but uh, we'll go ahead and add it anyways. Stop at entry is false. And then finally, we're gonna pass in the following args. And this is just an array of arguments to pass to Godot. Um, and there's not much going on here. You're basically just passing in a path command. So uh, dash dash path, like so. And then once again, we're using um, a macro and dollar sign and then work space root, like so. And this is all you need to go ahead and run your project. So uh, make sure that you can read that. Hopefully that's all perfectly clear. Let me just zoom that in again so you can, you can see exactly what I typed here. So literally the configuration, you can set it to create a default for you, name it whatever you wish. And again, that is the name that will show up over here. You wanna have it as launch. Uh, you're gonna wanna do a build before you launch, which is your pre-launch task. That is what corresponds to over here, which by the way, I'm going to switch this over to build so that it matches up perfectly and save that. So that is the name over here of the task to run before launching. And then you give it a path to the Godot command. Uh, and then the rest of this, I think is somewhat optional to be honest, but it basically tells it where to find the project files and documents and so on. And that is the basics of it. So now if I go ahead back here and if I hadn't screwed anything up, I click this run command and it will do a build. As you can see, it's doing a .NET build of our project, assuming there are no errors in our project. And then it will fire up a copy Okay, so this is one of the catch. So we're getting an error here. It can't run because no main has been defined yet. So what I'm going to do is basically go back to Godot itself. This is my bad. So what I want to do is run and it says there's no main scene defined. So you do have to kind of run it at least once or configure the main scene. Uh, and there we go, boom, it is done. So let's head on back over here and we'll do the run again. And and that is again, a first time only thing. So there you see, now it is up and running here. Uh, now we can do a couple of other interesting things. So for example, I come back here to my project, go down here, 
Now let's go take a look at our code right here. So in the uh, ready code for our project, I'm just going to do int i equals 42 like so. And what you're going to notice is I can easily set a breakpoint on things and then I can run my project. Once again, I could come back here and run it or I can just hit the F5 key and run it. And then what it will do is automatically load things up and boom hit my breakpoint and then you see here i can ins expect inspect the value so it hasn't actually run yet so we can uh you know step over that and you see now the value is 42 so you can walk through your code line by line by line so that is all that is involved in debugging your c sharp project now again there are a couple of other things more advanced that you can get to you can now again set this up you can have another configuration here for attached to existing it's basically again just slightly different text going on another thing again i want you to be aware of if you are working with the godot game engine what you can do is come down here and search for godot in the marketplace and you're going to find you've got a couple of tools you don't really need the debugger tools that much if you're working with um, the engine, like if you're working with uh, C Sharp tooling here. Uh, but there are tools in place for, okay, so yeah, so this one is kind of outdated. You're not going to need this one anymore. But the Godot tools here, these enable you to actually work with the GD uh, extension. It uh, also has tools for uh, connecting to an existing version of Godot if it's already running. So if you're going to work with GD script um, debugging as well, you may want to install this guy on top. So at the end of the day, a default install should look something like this if you're doing Godot development. Now, let me just zoom this out so I can get it all on one screen at a time. But you're going to notice the C Sharp dev kit will automatically install everything else you need. So C Sharp, the .NET runtime install tool are also installed along with that, as is IntelliCode, which is like a smart code completion for C Sharp developers. And then the other one you might want to get installed is this Godot tools. So this will give you the ability to uh, work with GD script. And then you're going to notice over here, it's also trying to connect to um, Godot. So it can run a version of Godot here. Now, one thing you want to be aware of here and this is important if you start working with this guy uh, you may want to come into this uh, so Godot tools installed go here go to extension settings and one thing that you will find is I do believe with Godot 4.1 this has now been changed to 6005 so you want to make sure that your um, language server port so LSP server port here uh, the language server is running in the same settings as so that's why this is failing over here. So this will actually hook up and work now. So this is an optional tool if you want to do uh, GD script work, if you want to develop and walk through .gd code, um, and this will give you code highlights and so on and so forth. So if you're working uh, in Godot and you're working with um, GD script instead of uh, C sharp script, uh, you're going to want to install the Godot tools as well. So ladies and gentlemen, that is it. Everything you need to know to get Visual Studio code up and running if you're working with C sharp with Visual Studio. Pretty straightforward on the whole, but it's not incredibly intuitive. So at the end of the day, all you need to do is have this launch.json. And if you want, literally just copy and paste this version and change this so that it is the path of you to your Godot install. And then you need to have a tasks. And again, this is the complete default. The only other thing you don't want to have is make sure that the name here matches up with the name here for your pre-launch. And that's it. And you're done. And then you can use F5 to launch it. Or again, you can grab it from here there, whatever you named it. So here again, the name here will show up here. So you can have multiple configs, multiple options, all available there. And just Google like attached to Godot again, uh, launch.json. You're going to find the text required if you want to do some more advanced stuff like, um, you know, connect to an already running version of Godot or anything like that. So that's, that's it. Uh, Visual Studio Code uh, with C Sharp and the Godot game engine. Hopefully you found that little tutorial useful and I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.